Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I came from the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA. Uh, JICA is a government agency to implement the Official Development Assistance, ODA. Today, I'd like to talk about uh, these three points. First, uh, issues of megacities are not only visible infrastructure and service, but also invisible uh, regulations and so forth. And second, the public sector needs to strengthen regulations in accordance with the economic growth, especially in megacities. And third, uh, such regulations create uh, attractive business opportunities for the private sector to provide solutions and innovation. Okay. So water-related issues in megacities are by and large similar. So these are visible infrastructure and service-related issues. So for water supply is often uh, faced with various issues such as low coverage, uh, intermittent water supply, low pressure, low, uh, low water quality, leakage, illegal connections, and limited coverage to urban poor. Uh, wastewater is troubled with issues like the uh, severe water pollution, uh, low coverage, low treatment, and insufficient capacity of drainage. Uh, for water resources sector, uh, the problems like lowering groundwater level, land subsidence, uh, inundation, and high cost for water resources development and transmission, and seawater intrusion to rivers and uh, aquifers. So these are common issues in megacities in developing countries. But the, uh, those issues are related to infrastructure and service, but they are just the tip of the iceberg. So deep-rooted issues are not visible, but important. So those issues include regulations, governance, finance, awareness, and capacity development. Uh, for example, uh, issues like lack or weak enforcement of regulations, low cost recovery, low awareness of decision makers, politicians, and lack of human resources are not visible, but very, very important and rampant in megacities. So addressing these invisible issues and creating an enabling environment are uh, important role of the public sector especially megacities are too big, too large, to solve issues by direct intervention. The public sector requires the cooperation of a wide range of stakeholders, including the private sector. So the regulations are more important in megacities. And this will create demand for the business. We're strengthening enabling environment will create business opportunities. The official development assistance and development partners like JICA can bridge the public sector and the business to catalyze the interactions between both sectors. And from our experience, uh, issues in megacities in accordance with uh, issues in megacities change in accordance with economic growth. The economic growth will bring about change of investment capacity and change of people's awareness and needs. So generally speaking, issues and public concern shift from quantity to quality, from meeting basic human needs to increasing amenity and from response to preparedness. Uh, this graph shows the historical change of Japanese uh, GDP per capita 
by the blue line with the current level of some Southeast Asian countries and their capital cities. So uh, until 1970s, uh, Tokyo's pressing issues were lack of infrastructure, water pollution, land subsidence, and flood control. So the public sector heavily invested for expansion of the infrastructure. To overcome these issues, and as the economy grew, investment capacity of the public sector expanded so that the government was gradually uh, able to invest to quality of service, amenity, and the safety against extreme events, and recently replacement of constructed facilities became urgent needs. So issues in Tokyo changed like this according to the economic growth. And investment capacity for infrastructure can be leveraged by economic growth. Uh, this blue line of this graph shows the historical increase of water production capacity in Tokyo for water supply system. Within 20 years from 1955 to 1975, Tokyo quadrupled its production capacity. It's surprising and amazing. And its financial source was public enterprise bond. So uh, this red line shows the outstand outstanding balance uh, of the uh, bond public enterprise bond. Okay. And then, of course, the bond must be repaid. So Tokyo raised water tariff gradually as the economic growth realized and household income increased. So you can see this in the uh, green line. Uh, green line shows the water tariff revenue. Yes. So Tokyo successfully financed its rapid infrastructure expansion by harnessing the benefits of the uh, economic growth and burden sharing among uh, generations using the bond. So lessons learned from this case is that the strategy of Tokyo did work. There is the investing in, in infrastructure boldly by utilizing the economic return to be generated by the growth and recover its cost by a tariff collection. The mega cities uh, usually have advantage to adopt this strategy because mega cities are a uh, growth center in the country. So in this strategy and financial soundness of the water utility was essential precondition to convince the market to purchase the bonds. The megacities have to finance infrastructure by themselves and let the central government allocate subsidies to rural people who tend to be left behind. So Tokyo's case offers very valuable lessons to infrastructure finance. In accordance with economic growth, the awareness and needs of the people also changed. So with respect to the uh, drinking water, uh, people required, uh, people's requirement changed from public health and better access to good taste and well preparedness against extreme events like disaster. And regarding sanitation and water uh, environment, people's needs uh, changed from disposal of feces to uh, pollution control and better river environment. Regarding the disaster management, uh, first, the countermeasures against flood control was crucial issue. And then now uh, we are facing the problem of the urban flood 
So they localized inundation by torrential rains and climate change adaptation. And the planning process also changed to attach importance to public participation and uh, consensus building. So these changes are already observed or will be observed in the mega cities in developing countries also uh, within a shorter time period. So in the case of Japan, uh, there is about 30 year time lag between the coverage of water supply and sewerage as shown in this graph. And in, according to the JICA's experience, uh, construction of sewerage system requires GDP per capita around 2,000 to 4,000 US dollars. We can predict that the water pollution uh, will get more serious in mega cities in developing countries, but the investment in sewerage depends on the economic level. So we need to shorten this time lag to achieve SDGs. So in order to shorten the development path and achieve SDGs, uh, introducing four-sided regulations is important. So let me explain two examples. First, uh, Japan introduced total pollutant load control in the megacities to overcome CRS water pollution. So this regulation strongly encouraged wastewater treatment and create business, uh, opportuni uh, business opportunities for the water industry. And second, uh, restriction on groundwater extraction was introduced in Japan to stop land substance in mega cities. And also water tariff was set at an appropriate level considering the cost recovery. So these regulations promoted a water saving and reuse by water users and also created business opportunities for the private sector. Okay. And then the mega cities in developing countries have some opportunities to take countermeasures against water-related issues. So first, uh, they can foresee the changes of needs from the experience of other mega cities like Tokyo. So they can introduce effective regulations take preventive measures and wise investment. And second, they can leapfrog by learning knowledge from other mega cities and harnessing recent development of science, technology, and innovation. So I believe mega cities in developing countries can shorten the time required for their development. And this slide shows opportunities and expectations for the business. So first, providing solutions to foreseeable changes of need, issues and people's needs. And second, the uh, innovation for the leapfrog development. Uh, here, innovation is expected not only in technology, but also in the business model. And third, uh, filling the financial gap to achieve SDGs by private investment. So cooperation and interactions between the public sector and the private sector are important. As already mentioned, the public sector plays an important role to introduce regulations to address foreseeable issues and needs of mega cities and create enabling environment for business. And then private sector uh, is expected to provide solutions and innovations and private investment for the public service. And then development partners like JICA can bridge the public sector and the private sector. The private sector can utilize development partners to appeal their requests to the public sector. 
Okay, in summary, uh, I talked three points. Uh, the first, uh, issues of megacities are not only visible one, but also invisible regulations are very important. And second point is the public sector needs to strengthen the regulations in accordance with the economic growth, especially in megacities. And third point is that the uh, regulations will create attractive business opportunities for the private sector to provide solutions and innovations. Uh, that's all for my presentation. Thank you very much for your kind attention. <laughs>